Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and this is a big beige box. Hi, welcome back. This is uh, Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and this big beige box is the Cooler Master Master Box Lite 5 Tower Case from Cooler Master. Now, this is uh, one of the latest designs, it's a ATX compatible case and it has the new, I don't think it's patented, or patented, 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 <laughs> patented front dark mirror uh, front panel, which is basically a dark acrylic front panel, which allows you to put fans or LEDs behind the front panel, which can glow and basically look really cool. Now, in conjunction with the front panel acrylic, which is like a dark smoke, there's also a side panel, which is also uh, plastic, acrylic or whatever, but it is made to look like it's a tempered glass case. So for the price of this case, which is currently $39.99, you get the look of a case which is far more expensive, getting on for the sort of uh, Fantex and the sort of Corsair, uh, 400s, that kind of price range, like the 70 to 80, 90 pound mark. So you get a very nice looking case for not a lot of money. So before we go any further, let's give you some idea of the specs. So uh, materials, the body is steel and plastic bezels. Dimensions, you're looking at 468.8 by 200 by 454. Uh, motherboard support, you've got micro ATX, mini ATX and ATX, uh, no extended ATX unfortunately. Uh, expansion slot, expansion, I've got someone else's teeth in today I swear. Expansion slots, uh, you've got seven, so uh, going to be fine for SLA, SLI configurations, <laughs> I really shouldn't be doing this today. Uh, fan support, I know obviously if, if you're uh, building an enthusiast system, fan support is uh, pretty important. So fan support on the front, you've got the option of 320 mil fans or 240 mil fans. On the rear, there's the option for 120 mil fans. So only four fans possible in this case. There's no top ventilation. It's purely three on the front, one on the back. Um, that was my only concern, if I'm honest, when I was buying this case. For every other feature this case has, such as the enclosure on the bottom for the PSU, uh, the tempered glass, well, folk, faux, <laughs> God, the fake tempered glass side panel. All the features are there, it's great. It's got everything I could possibly want, filtered intakes, etc. The one thing it hasn't got, which I really, really, really wish it had, is top mounted fans. If it had had space for either one, two, maybe even three fans on the top, this, in my mind, would have made this case go from being a contender to being an absolute perfect winning case, especially for the price. But anyway, I digress. Uh, clearances. Now, for the CPU cooler, you've got 160 mil. For the graphic card lengthwise, you've got 400 mil, so that's going to cover pretty much most cards. Uh, and power supply in the bottom, you've got 180 mil power supplies uh, it will support up to. And the power supply is, as we said, it is at the bottom in the enclosure. So, that's enough about the specs. Let's uh, open this bad boy and uh, see what we get. Okay, so there it is, unboxed. I've left the uh, the peely stuff on the side, and I think there's some on the front as well. So let's have a look at what we got in the box. In the box, we get the warranty information, la la la, not interested. And we have the destruction manual. So I don't think there's gonna be any real surprises in here. No, no, 
just tells you what you get inside the box uh, and gives you a list of parts. But if you're a PC builder, chances are you know what the parts are anyway, so we'll do what most, people, most of us do and we'll just blindly bluff our way through. Okay, so let's start with the side, being as the side is here. So this is the uh, tempered glass side panel, which is acrylic, and it's got thumb screws, which to hold it in place. And actually, one thing I noticed when I was taking this case out, it is absolutely really, really light. I was expecting it to be a lot heavier than it is. And luckily the thumb screws aren't on too tight. Now already just moving this case around, it's uh, it's not quite up to the same standards as like the uh, NZXT uh, S340, that kind of thing. But then that is a, another sort of price bracket jump up again. You're looking at sort of 60 to 70 pounds for one of those. This is 39.99 uh, UK, so you're probably looking at about 50 dollars US, uh, maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more, but around that sort of thing. So as you can see, that is the acrylic side window and you can probably still see me through it so you can get some idea of what the tint is actually like it's a, it's a smoke tint so if you've got a nice system inside it and you want to show it off uh, with some LEDs and what have you it shouldn't be any problem at all you're going to be able to see it all lovely in there now actually what they've put on here or I'm not sure if you can quite pick up on the camera we're trying to get some close-ups after is there's kind of like a um, a textured surface around the outside edge, almost like what you get on sort of car windows and that sort of thing, to give even more of an impression of it being glass. You've also got, I've just noticed there, you've got a uh, foam, uh, like a gasket in four places there, and also you've got the thumb screws have rubberized um, grommets as well, so to stop the, stop it rattling around, I guess. But another lo nice little touch for a case which is only £40 is. Uh, it really is, I'm quite impressed already so far. I've seen a few reviews of this already and that is what kind of pushed me in the direction to get one of these. So, let's have a look, see what else we get. So inside, there's a, a box in there saying, make it yours, Cooler Master, that being their logo. Let's see if we can get it out without, oh, without breaking it. Okay, so that's our accessory box, but that's one side for now. Um, let me see what else. So you've got your. Actually, I'm going to turn. I have to turn this around. I think, or better still, I'll take the side panel off. So we take the side panel off. Um, quite a sturdy side panel. A little bit of flex there, but not a great deal. Nothing to be too concerned about. So let's have a spin around, and you can see all the cable management. So you've got a big space here to put your CPU cooler in. And you've got a nice bit of access to the back of the motherboard should you need to take the CPU cooler back out. You've got access here, here, and along here for routing cables from the power supply and for drives like SATA, that sort of thing. And there's lots of punch outs for cable ties so you can mount all the wires and keep it all looking nice and tidy. Now included is the 120mm, I think it's a Silencio fan. Uh, it's not an LED one, it's just a plain fan. And it comes with a three pin fan connector. So um, it's okay as a freebie, but personally I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna put in some uh, white accent LED fans from uh, Asia Horse, which you can see my unboxing and review of those from the link up here somewhere. But we're gonna put those in, we're gonna put one in the back and three in the front. So if I take the front panel off now, you can see the mountains that we've got four fans. Now this for me is one of the highlights of the case, this front panel. I'll get my nails into it. I haven't got any nails, as Mitch tells me, but I'll try. So there we have it. There is the, uh, what do they call it? Dark mirror front panel. Now, I can see through that quite easily from here, but uh, in certain lights, it, it does look completely black. And I quite like the kind of angular look of it. Looks very uh, futuristic and very modern, and we like that. But with some fans in behind it, I think it's gonna bring it to life. Now talking of fans, I said that I'm gonna use some uh, white LED fans, 
Now you'd think, hang on, you've got a case with black and red, why are you using white? Now I'm glad you asked that because these uh, access trims here in the box, hopefully, are the included optional color panels for this. So there's the black one. That replaces the bottom one. And there's the other black one which replaces the top. And there's the white one. Again, top and bottom. So all you do is, because these are filtered vents, you remove the filter from the bottom, swap it over, and use whichever colour you prefer. So if you're going for a completely uh, stealth build, go with the black ones. If you're looking at accent colours, go for the white ones. But what you can also do is if you're uh, into 3D printing, you can print whatever colour suits your build. Cooler Master provided the plans for these, so you can download them and print out new ones of these from your 3D printer, any colour you like, uh, which I think is a, a pretty cool idea for modifying a case. But let's take the front panel off and you can see where the fans can be mounted. I'm actually really scared about this because I don't want to break it. It is supposed to just pull off, so. Oh, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So, although it's secured well, it uh, come off very easily. So, as you can see, ventilation here and here. And that is a just a, a vent grill. So you can pop that out. There's only a couple of screws that hold it in and replace it with your choice of color for whichever build you're doing. Now, going on to builds, actually, can you see through that? Well, we've got it out clattering away. Mike, the reviewer. Okay, so front fans. So you've got space there, there and there for 120s. Now, um, actually those holes look a bit small for 120s, so maybe the bar goes in the middle. I'm gonna go and find out. Now fortunately, because it's Saturday and it's unboxing day, I've got my fans from my earlier video here handy. So let's have a look and see where these fans will fit. So, yeah, we can have one. Where's the holes? It's difficult to see this and... Okay, yeah, I get it. So one there, one there, one there. So it, was, it would go completely from top to bottom. Now the bottom one is probably optional because uh, at the bottom you've got the power supply and hard disk enclosure. If you're using uh, SSDs, then obviously don't generate a great deal of heat or if any. So whether or not you need to cool the bottom area is entirely up to you. Uh, the power supply has its own intake at the bottom, so whether or not you need that bottom fan really is more of a cosmetic thing than a, uh, a functional thing. And talking of which, at the back, let's have a look at the uh, cable management. Let's lose some of these fans. Cables everywhere. Okay, so. There's a nice bag of screws there, and also you've got some uh, extra long push panel pins for the fans at the front, so that's a nice, in, nice inclusion. And there's another screw in there, but I can't actually work out what that is actually for. Okay, not very bothered. Actually, tell you what, let's undo this and see what is on the end. So, there's another little bag of accessories and cables. You've got your usual suspects, you've got USB 3 header, you've got the uh, HD audio connector, and out of interest, sorry, you, at the front you have got two USB 3.0s, one uh, power button, which is the new sort of modern clicky button, which we like, uh, you've got hard drive LED, headphone and microphone socket, and a very small reset button. So power connectors, reset connector, etc., reset switch, and hard drive LED. And that's it. No USB 2 on this one. Um, USB 2 pretty much now is going the way of the dinosaur. Very few cases uh, will have USB 2 only. Generally they tend to be either USB 3 and USB 2 or just USB 3. So not a great surprise to see this only having USB 3. But obviously bear in mind if you're doing a cheaper budget build, if your motherboard hasn't got USB 3 header on it, then you'll need to order an additional adapter to convert it into USB 2. Uh, and I'll put one of those, or at least a description for one of those, in the comment section below. So, moving on to hard drive caddies. Got two hard drive caddies. 
both of which which will accept either a uh, 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive and there's a release mechanism which you just widen the cage out you've got fixed pins on the side and they just push into the drive and close that shut and your drive is ready to go so great little screwless design there um, slightly different if you're using a two and a half inch drive in your lower bays there are the four screw holes and screws are provided so you can attach your drive in there but um, this case is really designed to be shown off so in the front there is the uh, glamour spot area for the hard disk drive, that's for the SSD to go so you can show off your SSD. There is the removable tray God, these are always on really tight so attach your SSD to there and you can put it in either in that position or that position. I would say because of if you're probably having a big graphics card in here or a modern graphics card, that's going to take up probably a large section of that area. So your SSD would probably better off there to make use of that space. But you only get one of these, unfortunately, not two. So if you do need another one, you can order them from Cooler Master Direct. If you want one, just get customer support and uh, they're a few dollars or a few pounds, so you can get another one of those if you need to. So there's the uh, fan enclosure shroud at the bottom. It's very nice. It's in a sort of satin matte finish and isn't a fingerprint magnet, which is uh, good news because I think pretty much every other piece of acrylic on this case is a fingerprint magnet, so uh, that's all good. And it's ventilated as well. You can probably pick that up again. We'll try and get some close-up shots of this later to add in for B-roll, just so you can get a really good idea of what it all looks like. So on the back again, I said you've got a removable caddy for installing um, power supplies. So you can push the wires through, get all that connected, and then connect that caddy up. So you've got your seven expansion bays. You've got ventilation. Obviously, the fan can be moved up and down. So if you're using a all-in-one CPU cooler, which uh, takes a bit more space or is uh, going to encroach on the space around it, you can slide it up and down. So you've got a bit of adjustment there. That's all good. On the top. Absolutely nothing, diddly squat. Feel free to get a Dremel or a power tool of your choice and drill a dirty big hole in there and stick a load of fans in it, which is possibly what I might do. And so look at the base. Base, as you can see, lovely big rubber feet to absorb any vibrations, which is always good. And you've got the uh, 120 mil fan or power supply fan, removable air filter there. I say it's air filter, it's for more of a piece of gauze, so not actually that easy to remove by the look of it. It's one of those sort of ones you have to bend to, to get out. Not a great fan of those, I would have preferred a pull out or that sort of thing, but it's a fan. It's a, sorry, it's a filter, so it's better than nothing at all. So that is a quick, brief look around this case. Now, if you're wanting to see how easy this is to build in, if you click on, hopefully, one of the links above, you will find a link to the build I'm gonna be doing which is going to be this case, a Cooler Master Evo 212 LED, the new model, a FX 8350, uh, and graphics card is probably going to be a GTX 780. So I've chosen some parts which are known to get very warm, and I'm going to stick them all in this case and see how good it is at keeping it all cool. So this has been the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 5. I have to keep on looking to see what it's called. Masterbox Lite 5 with dark mirror front panel. I've been Mike, this is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and we will see you again in the very next video. Thanks for watching.